Good evening. evening. It's good to see you here this evening, and this weekend we are celebrating Reformation. And Reformation, as you may recall, is the time when God in His grace once again restored the truth of the gospel message to the church, and letting us know that our salvation is in uh, Christ alone, by God's grace alone. And that's the comfort we always have, and that is the truth of God's Word. The order of service that we follow this evening is the Divine Service 2, as printed in our worship folder. Let's begin by singing our first hymn, hymn number 204.
I invite you to stand for our opening invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you. Hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ have mercy. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord of life, live in us that we may live for you. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. We once again bow our heads in prayer. O gracious Lord, refuge and strength, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word, Protect and comfort them in all temptations. Defend them against all their enemies. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first scripture reading this evening is found recorded in the Old Testament book of Daniel, chapter 6, verses 10 to 12, and then 16 to 23. You'll see that these are familiar words, but it also shows us the connection with, in a sense, with the Reformation that we are celebrating, in that Daniel, being a faithful servant of the Lord, always would pray to the Lord each day, and the king of the Persian king told them that couldn't pray to any other god but his. And Daniel refused, even facing death. And like Martin Luther, we know that he even was willing to face death than to give up on the truthfulness of God's word. We read. Now when Daniel learned that the document had been signed, he went to his house. It had windows on its upper story that opened towards Jerusalem. Three times each day he would get on his knees and pray and offer praise before his God. He continued to do that, just as he had been doing before this. Then these men came as a group and found Daniel praying and seeking favor from his God. They went and asked the king about the decree. Your majesty, did you not sign a decree that anyone who prays to any god or person for 30 days except to you, your majesty, would be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, Indeed I did. The order is established as a law of the Medes and the Persians that cannot be revoked. Then the king gave the order, and Daniel was brought and thrown into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continually rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the pit. The king sealed it with his signet ring and the signet rings of his nobles so that nothing could be changed with regard to Daniel's situation. Then the king went to his palace. He spent the night without food, and no entertainment was brought before him. 
but he could not sleep. At dawn, the king arose as soon as it was light and hurried to the lion's den. As he came near the pit, he cried out in a fearful voice. The king said to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God whom you serve continually able to rescue you from the lions? Then Daniel spoke with the king, Your majesty, may you live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the mouth of the lions. They have not hurt me, because he found me innocent in his presence. Also before you, your majesty, I have committed no crime. Then the king was very glad and said that Daniel should be brought up from the pit. So Daniel was brought up from the pit, and he was unharmed because he trusted in his God. This is God's word. This evening, we join together in singing Psalm 46, a psalm that reminds us that God is our refuge. In fact, Martin Luther found great encouragement in these words. The psalm will be sung by the first part of the stanza by our cantor, and the congregation, you and I, will sing the second portion of that stanza that is indented, Psalm 46. Our second reading this evening is found in Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, the first six verses. And in these words of our Lord, Paul is encouraging us to stand firm in the freedom that we enjoy through our Lord Jesus Christ. In a sense, the freedom from the law that condemns, because our Lord Jesus has clothed us with us his perfect righteousness. We are to live in that grace that we enjoy through Christ. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not allow anyone to put the yoke of slavery on you again. Look, I, Paul, tell you that if you allow yourselves to be circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you. 
I testify again to every man who allows himself to be circumcised that he is obligated to do the whole law. You who are trying to be declared righteous by the law are completely separated from Christ. You have fallen from grace. Indeed, through the Spirit, we by faith are eagerly waiting for the sure hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision matters. Rather, it is faith working through love that matters. This is God's Word. I invite you to stand for our Gospel reading. The Gospel according to Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 to 23. And in these words, our Lord is sending out his disciples, but he warns them about those who will come in sheep's clothing, but actually are wolves that will lead people away from the truth of God's word. We read, Look, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves, so be shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on guard against people. They will hand you over to councils, and they will whip you in their synagogues. You will be brought into the presence of governors and kings for my sake, as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. Whenever they hand you over, do not be worried about how you will respond or what you will say, because what you say will be given to you in that hour. In fact, you will not be the one speaking, but the Spirit of your Father will be speaking through you. Brother will hand over his brother to death, and a father will do the same with his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all people because of my name. But whoever endures to the end will be saved. And when they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. Amen, I tell you. You will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated as we sing our next hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. The words for our sermon this evening are found in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 3, verses 21 through 24, where we read, But now a righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. This is God's Word. My fellow redeemed in Christ Jesus, does something that took place 503 years ago on October 31st of 1517 still matter today? Does it really matter to you what took place 503 years ago? Are the events of that day and those that follow still relevant to us in the 21st century? Is it really necessary for us to have a a worship service that is dedicated to the celebrating of, of the Reformation? Do most people even know what the Reformation was all about? Could they even tell you if you asked them? Well, maybe to answer those questions, first answer this question. Does what happened in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve disobeyed God by eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil still have an impact on our lives today? Without a question, it does. Adam and Eve's sin still wreaks havoc on this world to this very day. And it will till the end of the world. Their lives, our lives, have all been impacted by it. The condemnation that they brought upon themselves is still the same condemnation that you and I and all people in this world have to face because of their sin. And that's brought out very clearly in God's word, where it's written. So then just as one trespass led to a verdict of condemnation for all people, All people, you and I, are included in that. Yes, because of Adam's sin, we stand condemned before God. The peace and the righteousness that existed between Adam and Eve and God was lost. The very very moment they ate from that tree. And there was nothing they could do to rectify that situation. What was true for them is no less true for, for us today. Which really brings us to in a sense, the number one question that people want to know the answer to. And that is, what can I do to make myself right with God? It's the same question that Martin Luther had in his day. It's the same question that the people were struggling with in in his day. And it's the same question that people struggle with today. What can I do to make myself right with God? And thankfully, through the Reformation, through individuals like Martin Luther, we know the answer to that question. And that's why celebrating the Reformation still matters to this day and always will. Over 503 years ago, Martin Luther desperately wanted to know how he could be right with God, so that his troubled, guilt-ridden soul could find peace, could find a sense of comfort and hope, because he had none. You see, to Martin Luther, Christ his Savior was someone to be afraid of. He was terrified of Christ. He didn't see and know Jesus as his loving and forgiving Savior. Early on in his life, even as while he was a monk, and early in his his life as a monk, he was just petrified of God. He knew that he could never do anything right, even no matter what he tried. And this is what he had to say during that time in his life. He says, I was often frightened by the name of Christ, 
And when I looked upon him and the cross, he seemed to me like unto a flash of lightning. When his name was mentioned, I would rather have heard the devil mentioned, for I believed that I would have to do good works until Christ was rendered gracious to me through them. He would rather hear the devil's name mentioned than the name of his Savior. And the reason was because no matter what he did, no matter how hard he tried to make himself right before God, he failed. It didn't matter how hard he beat himself, and that he often did day after day as a monk. It didn't matter how often he starved himself. It didn't matter that he worked himself to the bone. It didn't matter that during all that time, what he did was really ruin and wreck his health. It made no difference. He still fell short of the glory of God. And instead of getting closer to God, the further away he felt himself going. And the further away he felt himself going from the Lord, the closer he felt himself entering into hell. And even confiding in a friend about that, when he wrote him a letter and he said, I daily find myself approaching closer and still closer to hell. And he signed his letter, An Exiled Son of Adam. Martin Luther had no hope. He had no comfort. What Martin Luther was searching for, what he felt early in his life, is no different from what people are looking for and feeling today. People also still are looking for hope, for comfort. Everyone wants peace with God. Everyone wants to be right with God. But left to ourselves, we easily follow the lies of Satan and we go looking in all the wrong places, believing we can make ourselves right with God by what we do. But nothing could be further from the truth. As Paul points out in our words before us, he says, there is no difference because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're a doctor, a lawyer, a school teacher, a farmer, a preacher. It doesn't matter if you're young or old, rich or poor. All fall short of the glory of, of God. We're all sinners. And as sinners, we, our righteousness is but a filthy rag. It, it cannot stand before the Lord and be right and good. And what we really deserve is God's wrath and condemnation. And because of that, that's why the Reformation still matters today. It matters because what took place 503 years ago is very comforting and reassuring because 503 years ago, God graciously opened up the eyes of Luther to see the truth which set him free from that very despair and hopelessness he felt in his life. God opened up the truth for Luther so that he could see the Lord Jesus not as someone to be terrified of, but rather as his loving and forgiving Lord and Savior, the very Savior he desperately needed. And the righteousness that he tried to gain for himself, the righteousness that he could never accomplish, he realized was given to him by the grace of God through faith in Christ Jesus. As God's word says, this righteousness from God comes through faith in Christ Jesus to all and over all who believe and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Being right with God is God's doing. God's grace, God's love, God's unmerited love is really what saves us. God reaches down with his amazing, unmerited love and he makes our, our relationship with him right and good. We don't make it that way. We cannot, but he does. And nothing of our own do we bring to the table, but rather what God has given to us through his son, our Lord Jesus. 
And it is this truth that Luther came to know through the study of God's word. And it is that very truth that Luther shared with the people of his day. And it is that truth that he has passed down from generation to generation ever since. And that's why celebrating the Reformation still matters. What Luther came to know and believe about God's unsurpassed grace, he has passed on to you and me. He has revealed to us that our salvation is not found in what we do, but in what God has done for us. And even in the face and the threat of death, Luther did not back down from the truth of God's word. When he was told to be quiet, to no longer preach and proclaim that message, he did not stop. He boldly proclaimed, here I stand on the truth of God's word because he knew where true righteousness came from. It did not come from him, it did not come from anyone, but it came from the Lord himself. And see, really, that's why the Reformation matters. Because it wasn't about Martin Luther. It was about righteousness and certainty. As sinners, we know that we fall short of the glory of God. And since we have fallen short from, of the glory of God, how can we ever be welcomed into the loving arms of our Lord Jesus for all eternity? How can we ever be right with God? How can we be certain that our home is heaven? We can be certain because those questions Luther answered for us. He answered for them for us by turning us back to the truth of God's word and revealing for all the world to see that our salvation is by God's grace alone through Christ alone. Yes, the Reformation still matters and the celebrating of it. It matters most when troubled by, by sin, when plagued with the uncertainty of forgiveness, when, when it feels as if we are being crushed by the weight of our own guilt and there is no hope or comfort. It matters most because through the truthfulness of God's word, we have the assurance of God's forgiveness and love. We have the guarantee that our sins have been washed away in the blood of Christ. And we have the promise of God's forgiveness in the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus that he has given to us in the blessed sacrament of Holy Communion that we once again receive this evening. Yes, the Reformation still matters. It matters most when facing life's difficulties, when it seems like life's problems are at their worst, when, when it seems like you're jumping from one frying pan to the next. It matters most because the Reformation reminds us that God keeps his promises. God, through his prophet Isaiah, told us that as long as this world endures, his word will never vanish. The truthfulness will always be there. And when it seemed as if that very truthfulness of God's word had been snuffed out in Luther's day, God once again fanned the flame of that fire so that it illuminated the bright brilliance of his love and forgiveness and so that the comfort of the gospel would once again be restored. And because God kept that promise, he also keeps all of his promises. Yes, the Reformation celebration still matters. It matters most when, when death comes knocking at the door, whether it be our own or, or someone else's. It matters because when death is at the door, the Reformation reminds us that we have nothing to fear because you and I have been justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Death has been swallowed up in victory. And with this victory comes the certainty and the assurance that heaven is our home. Yes, the celebration of Reformation still matters. It matters because Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is the Reformation's answer, the Bible's answer, God's answer to the questions surrounding righteousness and eternal life. And so we celebrate the Reformation today, this weekend, now, and we will continue to do so because we know the gift that God has given to us and the truthfulness of his word. 
and we celebrate it knowing and giving thanks to God because our faith stands on Christ alone, on God's word alone, and on his grace alone. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join together now and confess our faith in our Lord with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. I invite you to stand as we join in the response of prayer. Almighty, eternal God, out of the depths we call to you. The world opens its mouth to swallow your church and our faith in you is too small to confront its lures and attractions. We confess. The weakness of our flesh. Satan deceives us daily if we are to depend upon our strength from ourselves. All is lost. Help us, we beg, to stand in our godly life, that the world may know that The work is not ours, O oh God but yours. O sovereign Lord and creator, we have no way to satisfy your righteousness, nothing to contest the deceiver's earthly power, nothing to mute its false attractions, nothing to uproot the rule of our sinful flesh. O oh, all-seeing Lord, have mercy on your church. You understand our plight. We thank you for sending a messenger of peace to correct the times between life and death. This one is your Son, Jesus the Christ, the incarnate Savior, who saves us from calamities that plague your church. We are even ready to lay down our life for this cause, as were your servants Martin Luther and his fellow reformers and confessors, who forcefully stormed the kingdom of heaven to restore the gospel of your righteousness to its central place in Christian life.
In the confidence of this faith, gracious Lord, bless our efforts to spread the gospel of the glory and grace of God throughout the world to the joy and edifying of all who hear and believe, and for your glory and our good. Amen. We continue now with the service of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who rose from the dead in glorious triumph to bring forgiveness to the world and everlasting life to all who believe. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and host of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth. We praise and thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ. And we remember the great acts of love through which he has ransomed us from sin, death, and the devil's power. By his incarnation, he became one with us. By his perfect life, he fulfilled your holy will. By his innocent death, he overcame hell. By his rising from the grave, he opened heaven. Invited by your grace and instructed by your word, We approach your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood and preserve us in the true faith until we feast with him and all his ransomed people in glory everlasting. Amen. And we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
You may be seated. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated. Again, good evening to all of you. 
Uh, it's a joy having you here tonight. Remember this Saturday, October 31st is not Halloween. It is Reformation. Thank you. We got that. But you can go go trick-or-treating anyways. That's okay. Uh, announcements are there to bulletin. Nothing special. Just wish you God's blessings and to find peace and comfort in the joy we have in knowing our Lord and our Savior, Jesus in the forgiveness that we have through him. Have a wonderful weekend and God's blessings to all of you. Thank you.